Hello everyone, hope you're doing well. Welcome to this part number 10. It's gonna be the last part of this series for now. Maybe later I'm gonna add some other stuff on this thing. Uh, but yeah, uh, it's gonna be the end of this little series. This series was more focused on beginner stuff. So I just think showing a crud, some crud operation plus some authentication stuff, it's pretty okay. It's not surely not the most complete application and not the most exciting one but i think it's just a good overview of the golang stuff uh, the thing who's missing right now is the fact that we can create delete of data to do and stuff like that and um, but the thing is um, we are not able to log <laughs> we are able to register but not able to logging back to our account and this is kind of not really nice <laughs> so what we're gonna do is we're gonna write, uh, we're gonna jump right in the code inside the out domain, and finally, just below register, we're gonna create another function here. So that's gonna be func logging. Uh, that's gonna be a method on domain logging, and logging here. What do we want to return back? It's a pointer to a user or an error. And login gonna receive a payload. And that's gonna be called login payload. This login payload is not created yet, so we're gonna create a type. And that's gonna be a struct. This struct is gonna be pretty simple. It's gonna have an email. And gonna have a password. So this is how we're gonna log in our app is email password combination. Now here, the way we're gonna work with the uh, the logging payload here, we're gonna do the validation like what we do in other stuff we did before. So we're gonna have a method on logging payload, which is gonna be called is valid. We need to make sure that you follow the contract, so you need to return a boolean or a map of string, string, not R, but uh, N, N, and I should not have a space. Here we're gonna create our uh, new validator. After that, we're gonna do must not be empty. So we want to make sure that an email is provided. And also we want to make sure that it's a valid email because uh, finally we just don't want to hit our database if it's uh, an invalid email. We know for sure that don't gonna make any, like we don't gonna find a user for sure if it's not a valid email because we've done check of register when the user did put an email. So. And finally here, we want to make sure then uh, the password is uh, not empty uh, also. Here you can say also, I kind of want to check like the length of the password. We did make sure then the password is at least six character. I mean, uh, like uh, if this is a real user, they're going to have this thing. So uh, yeah it's your choice here <laughs> for me i don't gonna check that i, I just want to make sure you pass a password after that here we want to return a boolean and our uh, v gonna have this function is valid will return a boolean and also we want to return the error with a map of string <coughs> now this logging method is gonna be pretty simple what we want it's we want to get a user from this db user repo get by email where we gonna pass our payload email if we have an error or if user is nil we want to return an error here i'm gonna return an error so nil and i'm gonna jump back on my error and i'm gonna create a new one called error invalid credential credential it's gonna be a new error and this error is going to just say um, invalid email password combination. We don't want to say, hey, a, a user with this email do not exist and password is not uh, good because think about that. If you think about security, <coughs> if you say password is, uh, this password is not the, the good one, they know now at least this email exists. So it just, I mean, I've got that from other framework, but it's something I think makes sense. 
uh, we don't want to get more information for those who want to do bad stuff to our app. After that here, we get the user, okay? So a user with this email exists, like we did in Node and stuff like that. We need to check if the password exists. So what are we gonna do? Is we're gonna check if we have an error when we call a function who don't that exists, yes, a method on the user, where we're gonna pass the password. After that, I'm gonna see if it's if the error is nil, we return nil in the same error, invalid credential, else we return user and nil. Now this method here, we're gonna create this method. I create that in the uh, user uh, folder just because a type user struct is there. We get the u uh, is the name we're gonna do, check password, take a string and return an error. Here, the way we can check for that, it's we need to return Airbcrypt compare hash password, compare hash and password. Here, we need, if you look here, we need to return, uh, we need to pass uh, hash, the hash password as an, uh, as a byte, slice of byte, and a password of a slice of byte. So what you need to do, it's to create those value. And the thing is, right now they are string, so we need to transform that to a slice of byte. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna say byte password and byte Ash password is going to be equal to slice of byte from my password and a slice of byte from the user current password. So the reason current password is going to be the byte ash password and byte password is going to be the password the user try to um, pass. And now finally here, we need to make sure the first one is the ash password, so is the password who was already transformed and finally the password we want to uh, check against. So we've done the logic for the logging. So you see now it's working. So now what we're gonna do is we're gonna jump in our handler and you're gonna jump here to the user. We're gonna copy paste this register because it's gonna be almost the same. The difference is gonna be it's gonna be called logging user. The payload is gonna be logging payload. Here, that's gonna call the domain logging. We're gonna generate a GWT token if we log because we want to return back the GWT and stuff like that. And the JSON response, we return the user fine, the token fine, but the status, we want the status okay because we don't create nothing. Now, if we go to our, uh, not this, but if we go to our endpoint, I'm gonna copy this line below, and this function, uh, this path now is gonna be slash logging, and now that's gonna be logging user. Now I've, I have the same user I've created in the other uh, part, where I have Bob Gmail. The password is a uh, password, so you see it's uh, really secure, but yeah. Uh, this application stable plus it just I've started to use it like two week uh, not not two weeks ago but two days ago and I really start to loving it. It's you have a free tier. The only thing is you can just open two tab. But yeah, I think it's nicer than Postico now. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna open Postman. I'm gonna copy this link. I'm gonna create a new uh, tab, and now I'm gonna do logging. I'm gonna go body raw JSON send an empty object. Uh, I think my server is not on, so I'm gonna open my terminal. I'm gonna make sure I source my .env because remember, inside of the .env I have my GWT secret. And now I'm gonna say go run main.go. And now I'm gonna send this empty object. It's not a get, it's a pose. Now I get this error, email and password. Email is required, password is required. So what that meant is we get to this out here, but we stop here and we stop here. So we're gonna now send an email and a password. Now we get email is not valid. Fine, makes sense. But that Gmail I come and now boom, invalid email password combination. Yes, that makes sense. My my email exists. But I mean, my email exists, yes, and my password uh, don't match the one I have already set. If I send the real password, 
Boom, now I get the real user object and this token stuff. If you want to test it, also example, if you send above 2000, this thing do not exist, you see, the user don't exist, but I, I'm not sure if this user exists because I get this MRR. So yeah, it's I think make more sense. It, maybe not for your front end if you want to do something, but I think it's more secure this way. And I don't say what I show here is the best thing. It just, I think, makes sense there. So yeah, so this is it. Um, now we are able to log. And as you can see, uh, if we look at our version control of this change, uh, was a pretty simple one because we don't need to do a lot. It just, I think, with the way we, we did structure, it kind of easy to just add a new feature was painful in the f some of the first part, but now uh, start to make sense, I think. Uh, I hope you enjoyed this series. Um, if you have any other question, let me know in the comment. Maybe I'm gonna do um, uh, more stuff with Go. Uh, I'm not quite sure yet if uh, people really want it. For me, I really love Go, but looks like uh, it's not the it's not like node where everyone want to see it right now. So yeah, I hope you enjoy and we're going to talk in the next video. Bye everyone.